Hello everybody and welcome to another Cyclops Row. Today we've got a panel of all Running Wild affiliates, authors and editors. Wave to the people, folks. <laughs> Let's go around. Teehee, introduce yourself. Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Teehee Hazlett. I'm an author with the Running Wild Press. Uh, my short story collection is called Dark Corners. I'm working on my second book right now. It is a slog. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah. That's I also, I live in Mexico now. I left the U.S. Deuces. It was a fun ride, but now I'm done. All right. <laughs> Lisa, who, who hey, are you everybody. and how are you associated with Running Wild? Hi, I'm, I'm Lisa Montaigne. And uh, I am a writer and an artist and a college professor. I live in Southern California. And um, I have done a little bit of everything from Running Wild. I'm an author and I've done some uh, PR stuff and some hosting and um, going to be editing an anthology called Red Flags coming up in this next year, which will be a modern love kind of collection of stories. There'll be probably a couple of things uh, by me in it. Uh, I'm hoping that you guys will submit something. It's on the submittable page right now, and anybody else who's watching is welcome uh, to be uh, submitting to that. All right. And finally, Amelia. Hello, I'm Amelia, and uh, my book with Wondering Wild is called Legendary, and I am a secondary educator uh, for my day job, and I live in a small town in Iowa with my daughter and my husband, and we live in an old church that we're turning into a house. Nice. What small town in Iowa? <laughs> I don't want the stalkers, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm from Iowa, which is why I asked. Oh, okay, well, Iowa. then I'll, I, I'll put it out there. I'm, I live in Lisbon, right. which is by Cedar Rapids. Oh, okay, I used to live in Cedar Rapids, too. No way, oh my God. You know, I don't this tell is- them Nah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Iowans when they meet each other, am I right? <laughs> right? And these are the books that are that we are plugging here. Uh, well, we're not directly plugging it, but we hope that you'll appreciate us as individuals and therefore go follow up and purchase our books. Uh, the game we are playing is called Microscope. It is by Ben Robbins and it is a world building game. The reason why we're picking this game is because world building is something authors do, but we don't normally get together and do it in the course of a couple hours. So that's what makes this interesting. We also can be able to do it online until uh, Kai Sosnowski created this website, Utgar's Chronicles, which is a huge help to this channel. And this is the site that we'll be using as our playing board. All right, so we have picked in advance the high concept, which is the Muppets take Westeros. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we are going to start off on the first phase. We've done the the, the big picture. Um, oh, bookend history. So we need a start and an end period that we're going to use for this scope. So what are you guys thinking? <laughs> let me let me let me make some suggestions then. So the 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 uh, Song of Ice and Fire. The backstory of it is all about immigration waves of immigration, right? So we could either um, cover that period or we can assume that's all over and take it from there. Let's take it from oh, there. I see. Let's start with something explosive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, has winter already taken over? Uh, well, we, we haven't determined a, a winter per se. Like what is our analog yeah, of winter? What if, because yeah, there were waves of migration. There were like the Andals and the First Men and blah, blah, blah. And then like throughout the show, there was like winter is coming. Mm -hmm. But what if we go past the show time pe period and we do a spring after all this wave of immigration, post political upheaval, how does Westeros build okay. a sort of like lasting okay. empire? So I hate that word, but <laughs> so then, what would be the the uh, the beginning of an event be? Because um, uh, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, is there an all-seeing eye in charge of uh, Westeros, like there is in the the in the TV show, at least? I mean, by that I mean Brand is a psychic, right? So he sees the future. That can be a little limiting, unless it's malevolent. Malevolent. 
I don't want to take over, so I'll let other people have some suggestions. <laughs> but I have some definite thoughts. <laughs> Uh, about where the show should go from there, we're, and well, also, are we gonna name? Are we gonna name our world something else of our own? We can, yeah. Right now, right now, all we have is the West, the Muppets take Westeros. Okay, but I we think have we to sort call of it we have to determine like what scale we have in history, like how long okay. we're going. Well, it sounds like this is the beginning of like a new age, right? Mm -hmm. Because we've come to the end of something cataclysmic and now we're in sort of a rebirth stage. It's springtime. So I think that we should have a wedding or a prom or something. A wedding. Okay. <laughs> the wedding. Yes. I like a wedding. Okay, good. Um, I like, you know, because like Bran was most likely not going to have kids. So mm -hmm. I also imagine that like Bran is dead mm -hmm. and the noble houses, because he's like an old man at this point, but like, you know, to make the time go, because he was young when they decided he should be king. But like he ruled, he put everyone through winter, it was hard, whatever, it's over. Mm -hmm. um, and now there's a wedding of noble houses and that, that couple is going to be the king and queen. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so, the wedding of uh, the house of, give me an animal type. Bear. Bear. Um, and bear. Okay. the house of another animal type. Frogs. All right. <laughs> How's everyone like that? Are we still on? Everyone okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to do thumbs up yeah, yeah. on my oh. thumbs keep disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I, I'm, I was flipped. I got to flip over sometimes. I can't always see the uh, the screen. Okay. Yeah, no, we're, we're good. So the house of the wedding of the house of the bear to the house of the frogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so the frog, I think, should be the male. Uh, or or maybe they're both males. I don't know. Okay. Well, actually, you're getting you're getting, your, <laughs> you're getting your ahead of yourself a little bit. We're, right now, we're just going to stick oh, with okay. that. Uh, how okay. should it end, though? Ooh. The end well, of the wedding, or the end of this whole the era end of, the span of time? Of time. Okay. Like, how do we define this whole mm -hmm. eon of this uh, place? Mm -hmm. How about oh, the... yeah so is it the end of the period or is it the end of the event time? the end of the continuity that we're going to define the historical period what if the oh, end the of it is first contact with like sotheros so... the like massive continent that's like in the oh. south of oh, okay. the, as of yet unexplored world which is like it's basically africa but um <laughs> oh that sounds great that's yeah. a great idea. Excellent. Uh, so I was going to say uh, the colonization. I didn't... First contact, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Stop violating the prime directive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, uh, but let's come up with a, uh, the continent. Uh, uh, a name? Yeah, we need continent? a name for it. In the show, it's called, or in the books, it's called Sotheros, S-O-T-H-O-R-O-S. Right. Okay, so how do we Muppetize that name? Sokotoros? Uh, it's all socks there. <laughs> oh, that's it. They're all sock puppets. Sock. Socks. Socks, <laughs> yes. Sokotoros. We do not understand their ways. <laughs> yes. They sock it to you all the time. And they actually do, according to the books. A lot of people from Westeros don't make it there because, like, folks are like, you know, there's a bunch of it's like jungle and you get diseases, but you run mm -hmm. into like humans and they just like attack and kill you. They sock it to you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have a, a light period at the beginning, which is the wedding of the house of the bear and the house of frogs. And then we have a dark period at the end, which is the colonization of the continent of Sakharos. Now, you notice that there's no space there in between there. There's a little plus symbol if you hover over it. You can um, you can add events in there when you're using the interface. All right, perfect. All right, 
So now we get to the ballot. So the, the sorry, the palette. These are ban or add ingredients. So let's see how to put it. When so you, uh, will there be magic? Well, well, we're going to take turns on these. So that's oh, actually oh. one of the items that comes up. Uh, so okay. Uh, actually, do you mind if I take the first one? Just because I'm giving okay. example. Sure. Uh, so. Um, when we're banning something, that's absolute. Like if you, if I say no vampires, there are no vampires. There's no workarounds. You can't call them vampires or something like that. Um, if it's a ad, though, it's not quite so absolute because we just might not get to all those things. But they, they, nobody has. There's no restrictions of drawing from the ad pile. Okay, so I'm going to add an item. Uh, Can you guys hear my roommate's cat crying? Yeah, this yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. She's going to do this a lot. My bad. Well, I thought maybe it was Jorge coming to visit you. He's never come back. I'm so sad. Uh, he had a, a pet. Um... Iguana. Iguana. I couldn't get that out of my face. I pet iguana. Well, yeah. Hey. I don't know if he was a pet exactly. A visitor. A wandering yeah. visitor. Um, he okay, stumbled need, into my backyard. I need to put this before the group. Uh, what is the Muppetized version of Westeros? I was thinking West Toast. Just West, West and Toast, but I think we can do better. I like West of Toast better than West Toast. <laughs> okay, West of Toast. <laughs> West of Toast. Excellent. Yes. It is west of toast and next to the waffle iron. <laughs> yes. Yes, the where the the iron, the uh, the, the iron the waffle iron throne. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the waffle iron throne is. I didn't want to say throne. I wanted to say something else, but we can have the waffle iron throne. Sure, why not? There's a separate priest class of bakers, of breakfast bakers. <laughs> you, know, you have the, the yeah. waffles versus the pancakes. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Game each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. So if you take a look at the game board under palette, I've added a yes. The first race of West of Toast are the full body puppets, giants like Sweetums and Big Bird. Oh, right. I love Sweetums. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and, and Big Bird can be a, a, a knight, like the Lady Knight in, the, in oh, yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. Big right. Bird can be a, a knight, but a really sweet one, a really sweet, like, <laughs> kind knight. He doesn't want to kill anyone. He All just right. wants well, to like, hug it's them. A knight it's Amelia's feathers. turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amelia, would you like to add or limit something? I would like to add that um, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem are traveling bards who can pop up at any point. Okay. Ooh, wait, okay, so how do we, oh, okay. Um, instead of, a, we have to we have to sort of file the serial numbers off of it though. So mm. what's a name for this okay. band? Electric Mayhem doesn't quite I work. I call but... it uh, Dr. Molars. Okay. And the steam powered crazies. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Please type that one up. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. Add item. Mm -hmm. All right. Dr. Moller. Steam powered. All right. And while she's typing that up, Lisa, now, would you like to add yes. or um, add a yes. a yes or a no? yes or no um i think that there should uh be no guns but there should be like um catapults like a gonzo character instead of being shot out of a cannon he gets catapulted <laughs> everywhere and um and also i think there should be dragons but they are they're going to be chickens instead of dragons all right well you gotta pick one of these okay I think I should go with the chickens instead of dragons. I really like the chickens. Okay, so uh, add item, dragons are giant chickens. Got it. Man. <laughs> I hope this is okay, because mine was also kind of a two-parter. Well, let's hear it, and we'll work with it. In terms of ban, I wanted this to be a universe in which 
slavery doesn't exist and will never exist. Okay. And a universe in which sexual assault doesn't exist and just never exists. Wow, this is not Game of Thrones at all anymore. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. Okay, so you how do we lump lump those two together? Like body autonomy is sacrosanct. Sure. Okay. Um. Okay, so actually, we want to make that an absolute though. So we have no to... oppression of people's bodies. There we go. Go ahead and add that. All right. All right. Okay. This would be interesting to see if you can add something and I can add something at the same time. I added it. Go ahead and talk amongst yourselves while I'm uh, writing this up. Okay. So this is actually when I play Dungeons and Dragons, this is the rules that we have. It's like slavery doesn't exist, sexual assault does not exist. Like these are just things that like your characters would never even contemplate of because they just they just don't exist in the world. Yeah, I'm the faculty advisor for the D&D club at my school and we had a lot of conversations at the beginning um, with with the students about that stuff and they were all like, oh yeah, no, no problem. Um, but yeah, it's it still gets a pretty crazy in there. They're kind of, I think they're sort of just like a traveling band of murderers. <laughs> <laughs> they're still murderers. Like almost. murder is still okay. Yeah. <laughs> not gonna do sexual assault or slavery. Right. But like well, murder is still but murder is still fine. I mean, <laughs> kind of the point of RPGs is to kill things and take their stuff. So uh, exactly. Amelia, have you looked at safety tools? Mm -mm. It's something you should look up in role playing game. It's a big thing now. Um, the okay. X card for example, is one that oh. I use. We simply okay. put an index, when you're playing live, you put an index card with an X on it, and anytime somebody feels uncomfortable, they just tap the card and we just move on. Smart. Yeah. yeah there's uh, there's other ones that. out there, um, mm -hmm. but that's, that's the, I think that one's the most concise. There's ones that like fast forward and reverse and stuff like that. I think the CX <laughs> card is perfect. Okay, yeah. so what I added was the second race to come to the land are the animal puppets. Ooh. So you had the giant puppets first and then the animal puppets. All right. And then Amelia, your turn. Okay. Oof. Um, well, I can't say no vampires, even though I'm inclined to do that because I don't want to get, you know, all twilighty up in here. But if we don't have the count, you know, obviously that's sad. Yeah, so. yeah. there should be a vampire. <laughs> yeah, there should. There should. Okay. Um. All right. So I'm going to say hmm uh the noble house of the uh let's create can i create like another another possible group who are interested in the throne well let's hear it uh i want to have at least one beheaded by sam the eagle or a <laughs> we'll, we'll call him you know like the the proud hawk face okay <laughs> um okay so uh the animal puppets are led by a um strong personality bird of some type <laughs> right yeah yeah okay so we gotta come up with a uh our own name for him though mm. yeah i thought sam the eagle might make a good white walker but uh <laughs> But I think that's not what you're going for here. Hmm. Um, well, hawk would be good, right? Because that's a hawkish ide identities, and all the animal puppets are almost all of them are just regular name the animal. <laughs> so maybe Hank the Hawk. Perfect. That Hank works. the Hawk it is. Okay. Uh, so uh, animal animal puppets are led by Hank the Hawk. All uh, right. Do you want me to write that in there? Yes, please. Okay. How many rounds of pallet do, do we do? Uh, we, until you, Technically, the rule is until people run out of ideas. Oh, uh, we take we, oh. we keep taking turns, and as soon as somebody <laughs> can't come up with something, then it goes it, it, one last pass, and then we move on. Um, but because we all generate ideas that might not work, so we're just going to basically 
keep going until we agree that we got like, like a good strong foundation. Cool. All right. So it's my turn. Yes. Okay. So uh, we're still doing the pellet, yes or no. I was gonna, I already mentioned the no guns. Uh, mm -hmm. So that I put that under no. Um, uh, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, you can. I kind of feel like it's implied that there's no guns. Oh, okay. So you, 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 uh, know, you can do it, um, but you might also want to think about what, uh, I see. what might lend itself more uh, definitively. When did gunpowder become a thing in human society? I feel like I should know this. Roughly the age of sale. When was that? I was yeah. like looking for like a year range. Oh, okay. I think I'm hardly an expert, but I think um, the Renaissance. Yeah. Okay. So before like, Game of Thrones time. After. 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 Yeah. After. I don't. I don't think they yeah. had gunpowder. Power and the uh, War of the Roses, which Game of Thrones is based on. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, okay, um, if that's a given, then that there's no gunpowder. So, um, a yes. If you want to replace gunpowder with something Muppety, though. With Muppety. Gunpowder. <laughs> gunpowder made of jam. Fun powder made of jam, <laughs> and then and that you have to you have to uh, in order to to hurt people with it, you have to get close enough to them to to like spread it on them with an with a butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, but we weaponized jelly. Weaponized jelly. Okay. <laughs> And that goes with our, our West of Toast theme. Mm -hmm. uh, the jelly. Yes, and mm -hmm. the, the waffle iron drone. Mm -hmm. All right, Tihi, your turn. And two ideas again. Crap, <laughs> but I just forgot one. <laughs> well, that uh, makes it easy then. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah. go with the one you remember. Man, <laughs> shit, the one I forgot was pretty good, though. <laughs> um, Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll go with the one that I remember, even though I remember both now. But laugh tracks exist in this world. Oh, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> with, he with hecklers? Do we have he hecklers? Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll have a Statler and Waldorf kind of analog, I'm sure. All right. All right. I have to Google a name real quick. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, okay. Sweetums right. is one of my favorite Muppets, though. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eyelash Sweetums. goals. Yes. <laughs> yes, right? Okay. Sweetums. No biological humans except Paul Williams. <laughs> Who is Paul Williams? Paul Williams oh was a, uh, a, um, a frequent host, uh, a guest of The Muppet Show. He also wrote most of the songs for the movie. He was a little guy. Yeah, very small. I don't know. Is he even? Is he still alive? Tony? Yes, yes. According to the Google search I just did, they didn't have to get a death rate for him. So yeah, he's still up there. Okay. Did how old is he? Yeah. He's eighty. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe he'll watch he's this. <laughs> yes. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul Williams. We're sorry, I remember the dance. <laughs> little girl. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, okay, so he's the only biological human. Got it. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Amelia, do you have anything? Yeah, uh, I think that um, Monzo, the blue person, 
should be the uh, father of chickens. <laughs> All right. Yes, we'll call him Monzo. Yes. Okay. So and that there's some implications to that, right? That the 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 monsters are another race, and they're sort of taking the um. Who are the ones from the uh, the dragon riding people? Who are who are they called? The Targaryens. Yeah, they're taking the Targaryen slot. So they're the weird, um, you know, slightly off uh, well, race that came came by and conquered again. So that I like that. I wonder about this because if Bran has already been king and has died, so we had a mother of dragons who died, right? Mm. And so, like, and we don't know whether dragons still exist anymore. So, but now we have a father of chickens that, like, I like totally in love with so <laughs> like we let's we we shouldn't like adhere too strictly to the canon of either property <laughs> so but i yeah the oh, okay. monzo father of chickens is too good an idea not to use <laughs> i feel right, like right. It's, it's whatever it is it is like it, it it maybe occupies the same space that Daenerys did for most of game of thrones where you had what's going on in westeros and then you had what's going on <laughs> elsewhere <laughs> mm-hmm which is like Monzo, yeah. the father of chickens, is like gaining power and like <laughs> having their own separate adventure. And like maybe they'll collide, maybe they'll not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was kind of my idea with making the chickens dragons is that Gonzo or Monzo would be mm-hmm. the, yeah. But I, I couldn't figure out, so Monzo is, is a monster. He's not an animal. I never can't right. figure out what the hell he is. There's there's the guy monster with the classes, nose. right? Gonzo, Grover, Elmo, they're all monsters. Oh yeah. Right. yeah. Amelia, did you type I that? Know, I was thinking about that. Oh no, here we go. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, while you're typing that up, Lisa, do you have something for us? Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh as I said, uh you know, I was thinking in the long lines of now what we're calling Monzo father of chickens. Um <laughs> that he could be the way he travels is, is, is instead of being shot out, out of a canyon that he he catapults himself from place to place <laughs> with a, a catapult and um and then of course the chickens either have to be catapulted or they <laughs> they fly alongside him as he gets catapulted <laughs> the giant chickens fly alongside the catapulted monzo father of chickens and that's how they get around uh okay. from place to place um Okay. All right. So that's a yes item. Um, so you can just Monzo say Monzo follow- travels by catapult. Okay. Uh, Tihi, while she's while she's typing up, do you have another one? You, um, which is that every noble house of Westeros has their own theme song. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and add that. Yeah. I am not going to add something. I'm going to make this the last round. Yeah, I could literally do this all day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I know. You said we I could do it all night. Uh, Just so, think of Um, yeah, we have to move on to the next phase. So Amelia, you have, uh, you can add something or just not not choose not to add something at this point to the palette. Oh, you know, I'm going to add something and I can't stop at this point. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to go, uh, let's see. So, um, uh, there are these two apothecaries. (laughs) who do experiments with alchemy and stuff. And one of them only says meep. (laughs) Uh, And sometimes characters may need to visit them for uh, cures or trying to turn lead into gold or something like that. So we'll call, we'll call them uh, um, uh, Funsen and Squeaker, (laughs) the apothecaries. They were called, I, are you are you filling in the magisters position? Oh yeah, you haven't seen it. You don't know what the magisters are, probably. I don't. I they don't were the, they were they were the wise men, and the only ones who came close to doing kind of something like science or magic were those guys. Oh. So I think that's the same slot. Okay, I literally can't spell apothecary right now. 
<laughs> so what are they? A P O T H O E. Oh, wait, hold on. I got I got spell checks gonna help me here. Okay. <laughs> I know. I was like grasping for straws. I was like, where's yes. my mental spell check? Okay. Got it. <laughs> All right. Lisa, do you have one more thing you want to add? Uh, let's see. I did actually make <clears throat> notes. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm glad you, you prepped I... for this ridiculous Muppet Westeros thing we're doing. You betcha, baby. <laughs> I do my homework. Um, there was something. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there is a a very small, half-sized Ratso mm -hmm. who um, he he eats cheese and he knows things. <laughs> and, um, yes, and so he's uh, yeah. We'll call him uh, Ratirian. We'll call him Rotarian. <laughs> and and, and uh, he's like the, the scholar, uh, the wise person, but he, he eats so much cheese all of the time that he has to be carried around in a wheelbarrow. Okay. And he's uh, being carried around in a wheel, <laughs> wheel, wheel, wheelbarrow by, um, by, uh, Big Bird, who is the, uh, who's a knight. Guy. Yes. So we want to think of a name for, we didn't think the of a knight name of for Knight of Feathers. Him. Oh, yeah. Okay. What was that, Teehee? The Knight of Feathers. The Knight of Feathers. Okay. So, um, so we'll, we'll call him, uh, Ratirian? <laughs> sure. Rat. Tyrion eats cheese and knows things. Carrie. Are you describing me right now? Because that is me after Christmas. <laughs> Don't put me in a wheelbarrow because I've had too much cheese. <laughs> I had way too much cake, so I'm there with you. Uh, carried around in a wheelbarrow by the knight of feathers all right Teehee, do you one, one last four, one four. Uh, go ahead and think about it but uh lisa do you have anything else to say but i'm um, one oh yeah go ahead lisa yeah. oh i was just gonna say the knight of feathers is of de indeterminate uh mm -hmm. gender okay oh yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. yes 100 percent <laughs> agree I don't have anything, but I do wonder if I can put myself on mute and go use the restroom and come right back. Sure, yeah. Uh, we have a couple turns, the, and you're good. Okay. All right, so we have our palette. Now we're going to do um, the first pass where every one of us adds a period or event in any order. Now, you can't do something before the wedding, and you can't do something after the colonization, but you can add um a period in there or you can add an event under one of the existing periods uh amelia goes first oh gosh okay um... uh, so while you're thinking this is where it gets a little slow so that's why i'm going to uh go to my question mark so uh lisa tell us about acid wit okay so um i'm writing a collection of nonfiction. um creative nonfiction essays, and they're on a, a bunch of different themes. One is the funeral industry, one is literacy. Uh, this one is about dealing with the ever blessed, necessary, but often frustrating medical uh, industry, which everybody, or industry or medical profession that um, everybody has to deal with at various different levels. Um, so it's my lifelong, uh, interaction of dealing with acid reflux. I know it's like, I'm an old timey man, um, <laughs> uh, who's, uh, you know, smokes a corner pipe, pipe mm -hmm. and is an alchemist or something. Uh, 
but this is a problem that's plagued me since I was four or five years old. And, wow. and, and it's way worse than people think. It's not just a little um, indigestion. It's actually a condition that has plagued me all of my life since I was little. And people didn't know what was wrong with me for most of my life. I only got a, a good diagnosis uh, not that long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I was told that I was crazy that uh, th there was nothing wrong with me, that I was just trying to get attention, and by doctors, by doctors. So this, um, so it's a five, kind of a five act uh, essay that uh, deals with this journey. And, um, and it, my essays uh, deal with th this, in this, in this particular collection, they deal with uh, stories from my life, but uh, there's lots of research, uh, fun fact, you know that up until 100 years ago, um, people were regularly treated uh, for things like my stomach condition with um, calomel, which is actually a mixture of mercury and chlorine. And um, I wouldn't so, call that fact fun, but OK. <laughs> I was being sarcastic, <laughs> uh, fun in, in, in quotes. Uh, and and uh, so I, I, I go into things like that and also um, how women have been treated, honestly, by the medical profession, mm. basically told that, you know, our wombs were wandering or whatever. <laughs> and, and, and also um, uh, one big uh, thing was for centuries, um, you know, if there was something wrong with a woman, usually they just needed, you know, a good rogering and, and then everything would be fine. Uh, that's pretty much uh, what they were told for centuries. So anyway, my essay goes into all of that that stuff and um, mm -hmm. hopefully comes out with a sort of sort of happy ending, although <laughs> I need to put a code on there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what this is about. It's my, my essays, I think, are are uh, informative to help people uh, to get people to think. But I also want them to, to laugh through the pain mm -hmm. is my kind of specialty is specialty is laughing through the pain. Yeah. yeah. So that's the history. The up. history of women's health medically is like there's something wrong with you. You're a witch. Let's burn you. <laughs> and like, yes. and it didn't yeah. get better from there. <laughs> like it's awful. So I know. I talk about all of that stuff in this uh, uh, in this essay. I go into all of that history and how it actually affected me as somebody born in the latter part of the 20th century. Uh, but I spent a lot of time, too, talking about how I'm grateful that I was born a woman in the latter part of the 20th century in California. Mm -hmm. That is a blessing. Uh, but, you know, compared with calomel, uh, you know, cocaine and uh, uh, laudanum were like improvements and a mm -hmm. lot more fun. Uh, <laughs> I used to, in the United States, uh, well, let me, to let me, cocaine before out, we go like too much into digestion. Or... <laughs> and cocaine. <laughs> Uh, Amelia is finished with her turn. So would you like okay. to read it? Sure. So in this period, Pepe, an emissary from the House of Prawns, moves in with the royal family and begins his decade of espionage and betrayal to erode the royals' trust in each other. I think awesome. the only problem I have with that is, isn't Pepe the Prawn already a Muppet? Uh, not spelled that way. <laughs> mm, okay. Can we change it? All right, let me go back. Yeah, let's to let's just that. change it just to be sure. We will call him... We will call him Shrimpy. <laughs> Shrimpy the Prawn. <laughs> All right, excellent. All right, and then let you follow the rules. You put it in between the two events. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. All right, Lisa, your turn. Add a period um, between either of these events or add an event underneath one of them. Uh, an event underneath one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I just go while you guys are yep. talking about other things. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, to add an event, add event. I got it. I got yeah, it. Yeah, you okay. can. Uh, when you hover over the period, the add event link shows up. I got it. I got Excellent. it. Okay, All I'm right. going. So Amelia, tell us about legendary. Sure. So uh, Legendary um, started off as a short story that was included in the Running Wild Press's um, anthology of stories. And uh, it was suggested that it could become a book. So I went ahead and wrote the rest of it. And um, 
it is the story of two young men who are in a relationship in 1950s in London, post-World War II, and they are trying to um, understand the meaning behind uh, a close friend from their past last words before passing away. And mm -hmm. it takes them on this cross-country I say road trip, but most of it's train rides, uh, where they're they're trying to track down um, some information about someone who's allegedly dead, but is maybe not. And then all the time while they're trying to understand this, uh, they're living through the oppression of of being a gay couple in a country where it's technically illegal. Mm -hmm. uh, and all threaded through that is um, Arthurian legend and myth, which is sort of being um, transferred onto these these young men and and some of the things that they're going through. Mm -hmm. So it's I would describe it as a, an LGBT historical romance and it is a very happy ending. Um, I like to put that out there even though it's technically a spoiler but um, I think that's really important that people know because the setup does not imply a happy ending. Oh yeah I mean <laughs> but it's it it does I think personally I might be a little biased it dovetails nicely. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, there's some some so heartache nice. but yeah. Mean. <laughs> happy endings are really necessary for lgbt stories like, agreed we as a gay person we just like clutch on to those that we have so <laughs> hell yeah i'm really excited to read your book oh thank you <laughs> um was arthurian myth something you were, you had always been in uh somewhat i read um how oh, the dark is rising series which kind of incorporates that legend into a young adult kind of a young adult series. So um, originally the short story was uh, supposed to be in a, a different anthology. I'd written it for one where the, the prompt was it had to be an LGBT love story and there had to be a knight involved. And you could kind of take it however you wanted. Well, I didn't want to do the whole fantasy, you know, Lord of the Rings type thing. I wanted to set it in a somewhat modern period. So um, they set it during World War II, during Operation Pied Piper, where the school children are actually evacuated out of London during the bombings. Mm -hmm. And so these two young men kind of find each other in that scenario where they're, um, you know, afraid of, of the Nazi invasion. Um, they're away from home, from their parents, uh, and they have to um, kind of just... Uh, cling to each other to get through that and it uh, they emerge with something a lot more beautiful than they could have imagined hmm. all right and it looks like lisa's done let me go over to the board lisa would you like to read it off a Tyrion who is holed up in a cheese shop gets a report from an informant that shrimpy plans to sabotage the baron frog wedding with weaponized toast all right well now the wedding has already happened this is, ah. this is chronological from left to right. So how can we uh, change that? Oh, can we move it to the wedding part? You, you can she, you can move it under the wedding. That's one way to solve it. Okay, so it, can I drag it or just copy and paste it under there? You can just drag it. You put over uh, put the cursor over that hamburger in the uh, left right uh, left it. upper corner, and you can okay, drag it. I got it. I've never heard someone call that a hamburger. I'm like. Uh, I was I promised hamburgers. <laughs> I know. I was like, do I have to get on my phone and order some food now? Yeah. So oh, you never heard that in as the web development hamburger? business. Oh. Yeah, I call I it a hamburger. Something. In training, in training faculty, I call it a hamburger all the time. <laughs> so uh, I can't get. I'm. I. I can grab it, but I can't get it to actually. It won't go. Huh. Actually, you. To... You're right there. Let's see. Um. Uh, I can just reload the page it, just in case. Collapse this. I can just copy and paste it. Yeah, anything. I think you're going to have to. It should do that. Yeah, but no. I don't know why it's not. OK. OK. So we have to have some place for our weaponized toast. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and delete the original one. Okay, All right, and I then that's just, a bad thing. Oh, the bad thing it's a dark thing <laughs> uh, so if we're building up that event uh, underneath there more than we have to uh... so I, I said that shrimpy plans to sabotage but that's under a different period so maybe that doesn't work there yeah shrimpy comes later after the weddings yeah. happened okay. So, well, maybe well, not necessarily. I move this. Not necessarily, because oh, um, this one has him simply moving into the uh, into the royal family. So, 
he can he can have actions before oh that's true he was introduced there uh-huh. yeah yeah he's been behind the okay. scenes i mean the only time. thing you can't jump forward ahead of is somebody's <laughs> birth mm-hmm. all right all right uh t it's your turn to add a period or an event <clears throat> I was going to add an event, um, but this one kind of like superseded it. Um, well, go ahead and type, type it up while we're talking. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and then I, wait, 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 collapse. Sorry. Uh, I had to collapse it too. We had, we had a large pallet. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. All right. Another event. Okay. All right, so question prompt. Going back to uh, Amelia here. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're raising ducks. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, over the pandemic, um, everyone went a little crazy, including me Mm -hmm. and my family. And the neighbors across the street built a chicken coop. And uh, our small town allows for uh, urban chicken raising as long as you follow the city code. And so we... We're like, well, we can't get chickens because that would look silly because they just got it. So we decided to one-up them and get ducks. <laughs> you so, don't want to be accused of being copycat. No, 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 no. And I was like, well, they're better anyway, <laughs> <laughs> which they kind of are. Um, uh, my, my ducks are really sweet. They're Pekin ducks. Uh, so they are dom- very domesticated. Uh, they're too fat to fly. They can't really run. <laughs> and they can't really peck you because they have a, a bill, obviously. So um, they're they're pretty docile. And uh, and now they started laying eggs, which we, we prefer the taste of to chicken eggs. Um, mm-hmm. But I do spoil them. I give them a lot of treats. Uh, they have been known to sit in your lap a little mm-hmm. bit. So they do live mm-hmm. outside, but they're, they're definitely um, towing the line between livestock and pets. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's a dangerous line words. when you need to call the call the flock. Yeah, we did. We had two drakes, and that mm-hmm. was too many. So, mm-hmm. um, big head, unfortunately, uh, did get the chop. My husband um, purposely doesn't spend a lot of time with them, so he's kind of able to separate himself and do that. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, big head went out to the woodshed and didn't return. Um, we watch a Alas. couple of these <laughs> people like you, urban farmers, will have YouTube mm-hmm. channels describing things. Yeah. And one guy, he had a flock of chickens and to protect them, he had a goose in there with them. Mm. And the, you, you get the gosling and you raise it with the chickens and then it bonds with the chickens. Smart. And they, they actually had a clip of there was a hawk flying around above <laughs> and all the chickens ran into the coop and the goose is just out there like, what? Bring it. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Yeah. Dude, geese don't fucking play. <laughs> yeah. They don't. They don't. Oh. All right. Uh. Tee-hee. you added an event and an event right after this other event mm-hmm. which is that one of these like full body large scale muppets was um because there was a weaponized toast had tasted the champagne and tasted <laughs> the poison and died so now everybody knows that there's a poisoning going on oh good all one. the alarms are starting to ring the bells are tolling oh my gosh <laughs> All right, my turn. Uh, so you guys talk amongst yourselves. I feel like we're going to have a lot of dark things, but isn't that <laughs> what this Game of Thrones is about? Like, does mm-hmm. literally, because again, I've never seen it. Does anything happy happen to anyone? No. Ever? No. no. Okay. <laughs> so oh, it's, it's uh, Lord of the Rings. Resurrected. George, George, I mean, Jon Snow gets resurrected. He gets so resurrected, much. but the sad thing is that he died. <laughs> That's why he needed to get resurrected. That's true. Right. That's true. Um, see, this is kind of like perfect for me because I'm like, my writing style is just like, how can I make things more dark? <laughs> like, like what would be, what would be bad that happened? And then I'm like, all right, I'll just do that. Don't you feel bad for your characters sometimes though? Like oh, all the time, all the uh, time. Today. See, I, I couldn't do some things to them. Today I had to go to the beach because I was writing this character and she's having a lot of health problems and there's a lot of political problems happening around her and it just sucks because <laughs> I know that she's she's not really going to overcome all these things because uh, it's important to the plot that she doesn't. Um, so I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I mean, oh, yeah, my, <laughs> my fiction always tends to have some kind of, uh, I don't know, reckoning moment for the character who makes some kind of decision and it's either to turn to the light or the dark. I don't know. Usually it's to turn to the light. It's just the way I'm built, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> A lot of crappy things have happened to me in my real life and I same. Been really, yeah, I've been really <laughs> diving into that. I've been putting off this one essay for my collection that I'm working on because it deals with the darkest period of my life. And But I know it's important that I need to write about it. But I think I've finally hooked a way into doing it, but it's not going to be fun. I might be doing a lot of drinking on the beach during that time. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I always say if you love a character in fiction, let them go. And then do everything in your power to destroy their human will. <laughs> and then you see what's left. And then you're yeah. about done with your story. <laughs> Probably right. right. That is very good advice. All right. I added a period. Uh, it's in between the uh, the shrimpy incident and the colonization. I said, from the fr flames and ash of the house of the bear, the house of the frog and the house of the cat form a lasting alliance. Nice. And then I made that one a light event. Oh. Okay, am I up? Mm, let's see. Yes. All right. Ooh. All right, I'll try to do a nice one too, since I feel like this is gonna go down. <laughs> oh, I should take that back. Actually, that was okay. our first pass. So. Oh, okay. We uh, now go. Now this is the the main body of the game that we're going into next. So, uh, you are going next, but we are first going to call you the lens. And I'm gonna, I've been bad about this before, so I'm going to use a whiteboard to keep track of who's the lens. Okay. And that's you. So, as a lens, you get to determine a focus. Okay. So, something that's already on the board, either the palette or the periods and events, pick something. Usually it's a proper noun, but not necessarily. It yeah. could be a concept like you know, there's a lot of poisoning here, for example. So you could just want to emphasize poisoning, but something you see on here that you like and you want to see us flesh out. Okay. Well, I am a little bit attached to the Dr. Moeller and the steam powered crazies. Okay. <laughs> so I'm okay, going to Okay, so you simply want to make that. them the, uh, yeah. Okay. I have good ideas. <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that one for you. Okay. And find focus. And I'm going to put your name in there. So we all know who uh, picked the focus because that's important later. Okay. So you've picked the focus. Now, as the lens, you, let me make sure I read this right. Um, you can make one or two nested um, things for our palette, uh, not our palette, but our game board here. So you can just make a period, or if you want to, you can make a period with an event inside it, or you can make an event with a scene inside it. Okay. This is, this is just because you're the lens. The rest of us can only okay. add one element. That's okay. Right. So I get, I get to do doubles kind of already. Sounds good. Okay. Hmm. And the focus is going to be on, is going to be on the band. It has to be about Dr. Moeller and the steam powered crazies. All right. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Okay. So, Tihi, have you seen Los Spookies? No, I haven't. It's been... I, I don't have a TV here oh. in Mexico. I had to get rid of everything I own to move mm -hmm. out of this country, and I will hopefully get a TV soon. So, okay. it's been hard to watch TV. Plus, like, I have a view of the ocean, like, right through <laughs> the door here. Uh, so it's also hard to watch television. So you mentioned like, you're you're interested in magical realism. It it's 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 one of the genres in the show. It's oh. it's like it's a slipstream. It's a telenovela and it's magical realism all at once. And Fred Armisen is kind of didn't he get canceled though? I don't know. It's hard to keep track these days. Oh yeah, I keep track. <laughs> I keep he's, track. He's the producer, so and he's one. He has one bit part, but like the the cast. So he's the, the plot line in L.A., and then the main cast is in Mexico City. That's another neat thing about it is it's shot in both English and Spanish. 
Mm -hmm. Which sounds cool, but everything I've heard about Fred Armisen is terrible. Really? Okay. I'm well. sorry. <laughs> I, this is going to be broadcast live. <laughs> not live. Okay, okay, not live. This but... is why my book doesn't sell. Talk too much shit about everybody. Um, but uh, the, way magical, above my class. the magical realism element of it, if, for example, it's like they're, they're, uh, they need to buy a... Uh, the, the, the core of the show is they... they uh, commissioned to do spooks so like the classic um a bunch of people who are mentioned in the will we got to spend the night in the haunted mansion and then they're they're hired to scare everybody away that sort of thing so like for one gig they need a haunted mirror and they just go to the mirror shop it's like yeah we need a haunted one. Oh, this one over here you know it's just the fantastic is just part of the reality i love that i feel like i'm drawn to it in part because i feel like most of my life is like that anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we just had more because I'll elaborate but I shouldn't <laughs> so. alright looks like Amelia's done care to read it Amelia oh I am doing my nested uh, oh you I'm just supposed to do two right yeah. yeah I'm going to a scene this time okay I think okay because I did an event so now I do I click on create scene mm -hmm. okay so and then I you see that the panel for a scene is a little different it has to okay What's the question that the scene determines? So you're kind of outlining a scene, right? What's yeah. the question going into the scene? What happens in the scene? And what's the answer that comes out of it? Okay, got it. Okay. Okay, so we can talk about magical realism a little bit more. So it's interesting that it came from Latin America, right? I mean, that's the origin of it? It normally did. And not just any old part of Latin America. A lot of magical realism came out of like revolutionary periods of time in Latin America. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's something noticing that the United States, sorry, is like low key falling apart. Like there's, <laughs> there's something there about like when all of your institutions crumble, everything becomes up for grabs. And then like anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that's one of the reasons that like Latin American literature has a lot of, because there's a lot of revolutions that happen here, um, but they have a lot of re magical realism. It's kind of like where it started. Um, it's funny because like in my education, I, I kind of saw it as like the hip hop of literature. Cause you know, literature is very old and dusty and white man mm -hmm. and magical realism is very new, but like everyone tried it like <laughs> Ernest Hemingway tried to write magical realism. Like all these people tried to write it in the United States were like big at the time and they weren't great. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, they weren't great. <laughs> um, but it was like, oh, your country's stable. This way. <laughs> What's the distinction between magical realism and say what uh, Homer was writing? Interesting. I mean, Homer was writing what we would now consider myth. I don't know how Homer himself thought of that. And like, okay. but the characters all take for granted that there's a supernatural world that they live in. And their society also had a very different view on the supernatural, mm -hmm. right? Because you're talking about the ancient Greeks who didn't necessarily have science in the way that we see science. So right. would they see a distinction between science fiction and fantasy in the way oh, that yeah. we see? Yeah. I mean, the, the Egyptians didn't, right? It was the same to them, yeah. science and, yeah. and magic. I mean, I don't, but I'm weird. <laughs> I'm like, I, I literally thought I was getting superpowers during the conjunction. <laughs> I kind of got superpowers during the conjunction. Okay, I think I'm, I'm right. good. Let's okay, go over so... and check it out. What you got for us? <laughs> All right, so under the period about um, the House of the Bear and uh, going away and the frog and cat form the lasting alliance uh, i created an event during the weeks of tense negoci negotiations of the house of the frog and the house of the cat for a better future tempers flare negotiations crumble until the steam-powered crazies show up to play the gig and everyone has such a good time that the alliance goes forward nice and then drilling down to the scene question how can the alliance between the cat and frog go forward when Cremit, leader of the house of frog is so stubborn and unyielding well, the negotiators take a break to enjoy some grog in the courtyard, and the steam-powered crazies show up and they rock the house. They give Cremit a ukulele, just as a rainbow, a most auspicious omen, appears in the sky. He sings from the heart, and it softens the cat people. 
And then the steam powered crazies knew that Kremit just needed to open his heart and speak from it. And music was the key. Nice. All right. So that was the turn of the lens. And then we go on. I don't know why I have to keep reference to this. I know Lisa's next. All right. So Lisa, you can add an event or a scene or a period, as long as it relates to the band, um, a period might be challenging, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but you only get to do one. All right. Okay. Okay. So right. I can keep going with uh, what is here. Yeah, you can right? build off that, of what um, Am Am Amelia wrote. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how's the weather in Mexico? It's so cold. It's really? like it's like seventy five degrees. <laughs> Super hating you right now. <laughs> Today it it did some freezing rain on us. Uh, what, and then, what is freezing you know, rain? What's freezing rain? Oh, yeah. you're not from the Midwest. No. <laughs> so just as the temperature is dropping below freezing and it's raining the rain hits the ground or your windshield or a car and just turns immediately into a thin sheet of ice wow yeah so it's pretty dangerous um can cause a lot of accidents and then the next morning when you go out to get in your car and go to work uh, you have to scrape this layer of ice off of all of your windows and then figure out how to get your door open without breaking the handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't mess around up here. <laughs> I've seen here. I think I've seen pictures of that. Everything looks frosted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, well, gotten, it's fine now. <laughs> it's gotten so cold. Mm -hmm. I have to wear t-shirts at night. I can't wear <laughs> tank tops anymore. And I'm really bad about it. <laughs> It was like, I go to the beach during the day and I'm wearing a tank top and you're like, the sun's setting is beautiful. And then you're like, oh no, it's kind of chilly. But the terrible thing too, to come home and change, I have to walk up like 15 plus flights of stairs. That's a lot. And not like US stairs. Like there's no code. There's no regulation. <laughs> These stairs are not uniform. They're not like they twist and turn they like weave around trees <laughs> that are like growing in your staircase and um it's it's a lot it's a lot my, my ankles are super fucking jacked <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you left all your stuff when you came i can't imagine what it was like moving in <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah well i mean this is also a thing about well at least now until the united states crashes and burns um <laughs> Like the exchange rate is such that like I normally, this, this is gonna make me sound terrible, but like I normally just pay for things to happen. I'm like, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna do that. Can I pay for someone to do that? Yeah. I have a washer and dryer in my own house and I don't wanna do my own laundry. So I pay someone to come to my house and do my wa my laundry for me. <laughs> wow. That's the boogiest thing nice. I've heard in quite a while. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> It's so nuts. I'm, so, I'm still trying to adjust to this new <laughs> lifestyle. And we can all do it. You can all do it. Yeah, um, yeah it's fine I'm now, tempted. but six months from now, when it's summer, not I mean, not so I've hard. been here for four months. I've been here during rainy season. Mm -hmm. It's hard, but I can handle it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You just have to like, you give up on the concept of being dry. You're, <laughs> you're just, yeah. you're never dry. You wake up wet, you take a shower, you get out of the shower, you're wet, you step outside, you're wet, you go through your whole day, you're wet, you go to sleep, you're wet. Like, I, you're just... I lived in Okinawa for a year and a half when I was in the Marine Corps. And uh, yeah, the humidity. Mm hmm was something else. It's the only time I had fungus growing on my body. I'm used to being here in San Diego. Oh, we just lost Amelia. Hopefully she comes back. There she or Lisa. Yeah. There she is. Oh, oh Lisa. Oh, no. This all... Okay. Ah, okay, so I had names where everybody is, and now they're all different, uh -oh. except me. 
Uh, so, oh, that gives me something to do. <laughs> <laughs> can I move things around in this? Yes, I can. Okay. You two keep talking, and I've got some work to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, so you lived in Cedar Rapids. I did. Yeah. I did. I desegregated a school outside of Cedar Rapids. Nice. Uh, How'd you desegregate yeah. a school? I was the first person who looked like me who ever oh, went to that school. Okay. I thought you were legally in, involved in the... Oh, no. I thought you were a lawyer, recruited. too, is basically what I was asking. <laughs> I was recruited to do it. It was the best, worst decision I ever made in my teenage years. Um, we should talk about something better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Cedar Rapids isn't really a high on my list of cool things to talk about, I guess. <laughs> Dude, the trains. and Do the trains still just shut down all city traffic? Yeah, yeah, they do. And like, it, still, it still smells bad there. Um, you, you're in a better place. I support you. <laughs> the five season city, which they the call city it. city of five smells. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like people are like, there's only four seasons in a year. And we're like, no, it's not that kind of season. It's it's smell thing. But when I first moved there, and I like stepped out of the movie van and whatnot, moved in. And I was like, it smells funny. And I would like talk to people. And they're like, what do you mean it smells funny? And I'm like, it fucking smells bad. Yeah. Well, for those of you who are not familiar with the, the great state of Iowa, Cedar Rapids has a large Quaker Oats factory. Uh, that emits different cereal smells based on the day and then if you mix that with um hog confinement odors and <laughs> okay so spray. it started off sounding pretty good <laughs> yeah i've yeah. experienced this firsthand it's yes it's rank in a way that you didn't know that smells could smell <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll own up to that. I would deserve that. <laughs> uh, all right, it looks like Lisa's done. Lisa, what do you have for us? Okay, so to follow up after the concert by the uh, steam-powered crazies where uh, Cream It has uh, an epiphany and um, sings, um, after that happens lady pigs pigalisa lady pigalisa finds out that creamet has fallen in love with a maiden from the house of cat and so she sends sir frogs a lot who is in her employ as a bodyguard to hiya <laughs> creamet as he goes on an ambassadorial mission to the land of the rainbow connection all right well one problem though where are the crazies ah the, the crazy the so focus. this was after oh shoot yeah. i was following off on uh, next from that all right i will re revise um carry on my my idea is that maiden could have be in the band Ooh. i thought of that i thought of that at first like the hippie girl mm -hmm. uh i did think of that and then it just me i don't know I always thought that she was kind of genderqueer. The girl with the braids, the glasses. Oh, I think her name was Janet. Yeah, I know. Janet. Janice. 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 I couldn't remember her name. I couldn't remember her name, so I think, all right, let me edit it to add that. Okay. It's like, she's genderqueer. Okay. Like, <laughs> just in my mind. In the same way that, like, um, crap now, shit. It's not like I'm too drunk, but I just totally forgot. Big Bird. <laughs> Big Bird is also a little gender ambiguous. Mm -hmm. You're like... Mm -hmm. Well, I yeah, think he's supposed to be five years old. Five years old forever, but still. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, Baby Yoda is going to be like nine months old for like 25 years or something. <laughs> yeah, for decades. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, I'm reading the, the uh, New Mutants comic book right now, and those kids were teenagers when I was 13, and now they're still teenagers. <laughs> when you're a valuable intellectual property, you don't have to age. 
Yeah, it's like, how old is Cyclops and Jean Grey? And how much fucking drama did they have? Like, <laughs> so, who can even keep up anymore? You, mm -hmm. My favorite fan theory of all time is that in Marvel Comics, Franklin Richards, the son of Mr. Fantastic and uh, the Invisible Girl, has is the most powerful mutant in that universe, and he's been dictating continuity since he was six. And that's why nobody ages, and that's why there's all these like resets and everything, is because it's all adhering to his whim. Because the characters wow. were aging regularly until he got to six, and then they realized they had to keep this going, so everybody's ages stopped. And they've established over and over again that Franklin Richards is a very powerful mutant. That's it. DC doesn't, like... DC doesn't have a fan theory like that. That's why they have these crisis things that have to keep happening. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like Cyclops and Jean Grey are like those friends who just like always have the most drama going on. You haven't seen them in three months and you like sit down with coffee and you're like, oh, how you been, Jean? And you're like ready to be like, I got a promotion at my job or like I moved apartments. And they're like, I've reincarnated into another thing. <laughs> and then like my son from another dimension came down and you're just like, fuck, <laughs> like this is Starbucks. Like calm yeah. down. Uh, now they're in a relationship with Wolverine, the three of them. I knew, I knew Cyclops was on the D. <laughs> That was, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I mean, Wolverine, also a little bit not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Lisa has made the change. And who's next? Teehee, you're next. Ooh. All right, well, he goes, I'm going to take a quick break since okay. we've been here. Yeah. Uh, so again, right. remember, it has to involve the band. It has to involve the, yep. uh, the focus, Dr. Moeller and the steam-powered crazies. Yep. Okay, I'm going to put myself on mute. Hold on. All right. Uh, Amelia, so you're, you're renovating a church that you're living in? Yeah, yeah. It was built in uh, 1906 as a um, small Catholic church for the local Lisbon parish. And uh, they ended up in the 50s decommissioning it, and they moved the, um, the flock over to the next town over to the nice new, like, uh, mid-century modern uh, church and then basically um, it kind of just bounced around between different denominations but it still has all of the original stained glass from wow. uh, when it was a catholic church so and it was all hand painted um, the the glass alone is worth what we paid for the building <laughs> um, so that's that's pretty cool uh, but it, obviously there's a lot of work that needs to be done so um, uh, you know we we like we're the bathroom was just cement for a long time. <laughs> there was just some cement, some rough you mean like times. A cement hole in the floor, or I mean, it was a shower, and then everything else was concrete and unpainted drywall. Wow. So, and in a basement, and um, the heating and cooling costs are pretty crazy because obviously it's a big space. And so, I don't think um, stained glass yeah. insulates very well. Mm -mm, no. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody went around with a um, some silicone and c tried to get it all shut, and yeah, it didn't didn't really work, <laughs> but. Uh, but now we have our, our bathrooms fully done. We have our bedroom done. We've got a dining room um, area and we're just, our last big project for this phase is um, refinishing the sanctuary floor, which had been carpeted. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like nasty yeah. um, anymore, but, uh, but yeah. So <laughs> the funniest thing ever though, is like, it's, it's in a normal neighborhood. Like there's just houses all around and um, kids and families. And it's like, five minutes from where I work, but um, the guy across the street um, lives in what used to be the rectory for this church. And I was chatting with him one day and just getting to know him. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, a lot of cults have come and gone through there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, cool, man, cool. <laughs> so that was that was kind of an interesting uh, uh, take on things. Um, so you've got the, yeah. the largest room, right? Where the pews mm -hmm. were. Do you still sure. have like a stage kind of thing there or what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's a two steps up to uh, where the altar would have been. And that's where we have our dining room table, which uh, is like eight seated, um, really nice big table. And we have like a sideboard and a wine cabinet there. And then down um, where the pews were, we have like the sectional sofa and the TV. My husband was like, I'm going to get the biggest TV there is. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I said, okay, hon, you bought me a church. You can buy whatever <laughs> size TV you want. Um, and then we just have like room for a lot of different things. So the, um, the organ is still there. So that is also um, down and actually does still work. Um, it's not a pipe organ, it's a pump organ. Mm -hmm. So you push the pedals and um, the sounds come out. Um, we have a whole role-playing corner for all of our D and D stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty, pretty nerdy, but, um, but yeah, so that's, that's really the showcase. And then up in the choir loft is my daughter's room. So she's got like a little loft bedroom um, with her little kid toys in her bed and everything. Is everything just partitioned with curtains? No, it's just completely open. It's like an open concept. Oh, okay. um, but where, where the priest's office was, which is right off of um, where the altar would have been, um, there's actually like a room there um, where his office was. And there was like a little um, room where the secretary would sit. And so we just tore that wall down. So now we have like a master bedroom there mm -hmm. um, that does afford some privacy. Yeah. But... <laughs> All right, yeah, T, looks like you finished. <laughs> yeah. All right. um, I don't know how to get back to, I put myself in widescreen for no reason. <laughs> Oh wait, no, 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 I know what's going on. Boom, here we go. Can you see your own entry? Yeah, okay. yeah. Go ahead and read I entered, I entered a scene back in the beginning when the wedding was happening and people were getting poisoned and they were like, oh my God, how do we stall the wedding because people are getting poisoned? And they were like, oh, we'll just let the steam powered crazies continue playing and so they do and uh but they end up like just performing way too well and the noble lords of various houses start to become really enthralled and enamored and different members and they realize that they're like oh my god for the first time in our lives we have political power like <laughs> We have like very powerful people who are like super into us and what should we do? But thankfully they make the smart decision, which is not to do anything, which is to continue to accrue political power instead of expend it um, mm -hmm. so that they can continue to be at the right place at the right time until they need to spend that power. <laughs> All right. I love it. <laughs> All right, and I am not next, so talk amongst yourselves. This is what I try to tell other people in politics or <laughs> who work in political arenas because I work in political arenas. And it's like, yes, you gain some power, but like, it's like a down payment, right? And it's like a mortgage. It's like, you should accrue. If you're always, whatever, you get a little something and then you like spend it on something else, at, over time, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. It's like, why, why not? Why not accrue? Mm hmm that's good. I like that. <laughs> yeah. This is, I'm so drunk that I'm just explaining all my secrets. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hold world. On, let me write that down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> my bad. My bad, bosses. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, oh, crap. What else can we talk about? Hmm. Well, who has watched Amazon's The Boys? Anybody seen that one? Is it I don't dark like that superhero? Show. Oh, it's good though. It kind of reminds me though of Game of Thrones and that nothing good ever happens to anyone. Nothing good ever happens, and like I don't feel like the women characters get enough agency. Mm hmm. Yeah, I just like evil Superman as a as an idea. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mostly because you got, you got plenty to choose from. <laughs> yeah, I just like it as a clap back to the Marvel verse. Yeah. Was anybody watched the Expanse on Amazon Prime? Absolutely. I want to. I want to so bad. I heard it's really good. It's so yeah, good. that's next on my list. That's on my upcoming list. So, I I made this crazy promise to myself that in December I was going to take a break from my regular shows. Uh, because some of the things I watch sometimes are, give me nightmares. <laughs> so um, so I decided in December, I just wanted to be all happy all the time as much as possible. So I put out feelers to watch all new to me holiday movies and stuff. And nice. um, 
So I do have the expanse on my list to when I get back to regular programming, <laughs> but uh, it's it's helped some. I mean, some has been really bad, and but I actually I learned an important lesson from one of these movies that I watched in December, and that is um, something that I kind of knew before, but it's family doesn't have to be perfect. We just have to be together. And I wrote that to my family because normally I would go and what's left of my family and go spend at least a weekend with them before Christmas and I didn't get to do that. So I wrote um, to them a text string, you know, this family doesn't have to be perfect because God knows we're not. <laughs> uh, half of them are insane, trust me, on this. Um, we just have to be together. And I said, well, obviously we just have to be together in spirit this year. And we all text each other a bunch of photos and all our trees and all that kind of stuff. And I learned that from Santa Claus three, Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Allen is a national treasure. <laughs> all right. I got a, I added a period. Okay. I saw it. Uh, right anxious. before the end, Dr. Moeller and the Steam Powered Crazies reunion tour was set to take the West of Toast by storm, but the audiences hated the new band. Oh, sadness. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's a Captain Beefheart reference in there. I have so many ideas. I can't wait for my turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and now it's back to Amelia. Okay. So, as the lens, you get to make, just like before, the same, the same focus. You get to make um, one or two nested um, events, periods, scenes okay. relating to Dr. Moeller. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. <laughs> right. Now, the ex the expanse is uh, is my favorite sci-fi property right now. Um, Mine too. Mine and, too. And it's funny that you mentioned it because, like, playing this game. Uh, the reason why the uh, the pitch is so specific, the, Mu the Muppets take Westeros, is because if you're very vague, uh, it always kind of ends up being samey. And every game I've seen that takes the approach hard sci-fi ends up being The Expanse. <laughs> it ends up mm. with a, a Mars-Earth fight, and then there's also um, you know people in the asteroid belt, etc. Just because that seems to be the way things are going. Um, but yeah, yeah. We're, we're all caught up on it. And that was quite an episode. I mean, the Red Wedding's one thing. <laughs> but the attack on Earth well, is... is in the Sept of Baylor. I was telling a friend of mine who I just... For the life of me, I can't get anyone to watch the x Fan. Oh, God. But I was able to get people to watch Game of Thrones. Right. And I was trying to explain what happened. And I was like, imagine the Sept of Baylor. Imagine the what? The Sept of Baylor in game of thrones when oh, okay. cersei yeah just blows up everyone <laughs> all at the same time yeah <laughs> and i was like this is what happened in the x fans like <laughs> because like if you like paid close attention all of the governments all of the governments of the solar system are gone now they're just gone yeah well i mean okay yeah. Well, I guess I don't need to watch it now. <laughs> no, well, it's not a spoiler. It's totally not a spoiler. So, There's so many other things that are happening. We were, uh, my wife and I were talking about it, and like it's it's a it's a sci-fi sh uh, show, but it's also so heavily character driven. It's not like the proto molecule is the inciting thing, but it's all about the human reaction to the proto molecule that really drives the story. So it's much more political Good. than that. Good. That's not even a spoiler because yeah. it was a foregone conclusion <laughs> at some point that somebody was going to take everyone out. <laughs> you have like three factions who are on the brink of war for like decades. Mm -hmm. And like, oh no, they all died. <laughs> of course they were all going to die. Like they were at gunpoint to each other <laughs> for decades. Somebody was going to pull a trigger and then everybody else is going to pull a trigger. Like this is, this is going to happen. And I guess it's got one and a half seasons left, which I really like finite seasons, this era of finite series. Yeah. Yeah. The Watchmen, the Watchmen changed the game. I would say Lost changed the game first. 
I don't as know far as finite that. series, because they no. they said we're going to write six seasons and be done. They they battled a little bit during season three, but which six seasons that? that didn't make any goddamn sense. <laughs> but it was still a finite series, as opposed to something like Supernatural, which Christ, that thing had had so much more steam than I thought it would. <laughs> but where was Lost movie? They made it for six seasons, but where was their movie? <laughs> It'll come around eventually. Uh, how is it going, Amelia? It's going. It's going good. I'm. I'm just. Uh, okay. Hold on here. Still. Still refining my craft. <laughs> also, yeah, supernatural. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to gain fans of my book or lose people. But like, I did not care for supernatural. I saw a couple episodes. I was like, mm, not for me. Right. Yeah, I think I made it through season one, and I was like, okay, I've looked at uh, the hot guy for long enough. <laughs> I'm, I don't think I can move on from this. He was on my soap opera back in the day. I can't oh, remember the okay. actor's name, but he was on Days of Our Lives, and it was when I fell in love. When... There was the hot guy, <laughs> and then the hot guy who mumbled, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and I was okay. like... So he, here's my supernatural story. I'm at Comic Con. They're they're announcing season two, so that we're gonna we're fans of the season one. So we're waiting in line, and we're both my wife and I are turned and face the end of the line, and Sam and Dean, I forget the actors are, are coming up, and there's this cavalcade of twitters in their wake as they <laughs> pass through the line, and uh, both actors are completely shell shocked when they saw the audience. They had no idea the response that the show was getting. Like, to witness an actor just realize, oh shit, I'm a star now. Dude, people love that show. I have no idea why. I never seen it. I've never seen Supernatural. I want to eventually sell future books, so I'm just not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like, there's so much uh, stuff out there. You can take a dump on stuff. Like, I'm tired of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. I don't hate on it as much as I used to, but I will hate Star on it occasionally. Wars, they lost all my loyalty at episode one. They're never getting me back. <laughs> that was that was well, a human rights violation. Well, it's kind, of, it's kind of done now, and now they're doing all the miniseries since uh, The Mandalorian was such a big hit. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the one with o Obi Wan with you and McGregor in it. I'm looking forward to that one. I'm looking forward to the one on the werewolf in the Tatooine bar. He's going to get his own show. <laughs> okay, right. Not the That's first Jawa, but the third Jawa. He's getting a show too. <laughs> getting a show. I'm looking forward to the one that I get to write, which will include <laughs> no characters for the Star Wars universe. <laughs> I'm just going to yeah. do my own shit and call it Star Wars. <laughs> Um, well, that 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 well, that's a strategy, Tee. That's a strategy. <laughs> that's for. It might involve some lawsuits. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> what evs? Uh, so, Lisa, you are what one degree of separation from the uh, re removing president? Oh yeah, I guess I'm allowed to talk about it now. Why, why weren't you? Well, um, I don't know if I ever told Teehee this or not, but um, yeah. So what he said is that I'm one degree of separation from the current current president. Um, my husband is an attorney, and um, he works on he works mostly for like what he does mostly now is try to keep people out of trouble, as he <laughs> mostly does. Um, but he's worked for in the construction industry a lot uh, over his career. And um, so I think this was 2007, eight or so, he was hired by Donald Trump uh, to do some contracts. Uh, he has a golf course in uh, Palos Verdes, uh, which is not too far from us. And um, so he was hired to do some contracts and some other work. Well, I mean, we didn't know <laughs> really much about him then in 2007 and we knew he was this rich dude from new york we knew he was on the apprentice i mean it had nothing to do with me personally but uh so um yeah so he worked for him for a couple of years he's been to trump tower shake 
shaking the man's limp little sweaty hand apparently <laughs> uh, and um that's and talked to him on the phone for many many hours and what he learned from that experience is that he's a very terrible bad awful man which we know now for sure um and so my husband knew this in 2008 nine that he was a really bad horrible person he would say oh i don't want to pay that guy you know some little contractor guy i don't want to pay that don't pay him i don't want to pay that guy Jeez. um he sued some little old lady who's rose bushes were or fern or whatever was growing over into the golf course he sued this little old lady i mean he knew that he was a terrible awful man and of course because eddie was my husband's name um would tell him you can't do so and so he would just want to do all this crazy shit <laughs> and he's like oh you can't do that and you can't do that and you can't do this it's not only a terrible legal strategy it's also illegal <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, he would tell him enough stuff that he couldn't do that, uh, you know, finally got fired, mm -hmm. yep. you know, as he, yeah, anybody with any integrity, which my husband absolutely has, uh, anybody with any integrity or trying to do things the right way, they just, you know, get steamrolled over and, and fired. And so when he finally got to the point where he was running, you know, actually running for and up for becoming president, Eddie kept saying, I was so nervous and worried and Eddie kept saying, there's no way this moron is going to become president of the United States. And I had that faith. That sounds familiar. I might have said I that had too. <laughs> I had faith in my husband. I had faith in my husband. I had faith. And then the night that he won, I literally wept. I l l cried all night because I knew it was going to be bad, but nobody could have made the shit up. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how bad it was going to be. I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't know how bad. And uh, so this time, I just didn't, I never trusted my husband again. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the moral of the story. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. I never trusted him again about anything. But really, um, and then I think he was asked to do another contract a couple of years ago for the company and something he did like really quickly. I don't know. He was cornered into doing it somehow or something. I don't know. He, he did mm -hmm. some kind of contract thing, okay. but, uh, but he would never again do that. Right. That's for sure. Uh, Amelia, you are done. Uh, yes. you did not nest these events though. Remember, one has to oh, be inside crap. the other. Yeah. Son of a beast. So, uh, if you can nest them or uh, pick also, one. my roommate's cat is crying. I'm sorry. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> kitty, kitty, kitty. I'm allergic, so I can't go anywhere near it. So, oh. it's just going to cry. <laughs> well. Hmm. She's quiet now. That's fine. <laughs> I'm surprised my dogs hear. haven't had a fit yet. So, there'll be animal sounds in these videos. That's fine. Um, yeah. Well, I'm just going to I'm just going to delete this one. Okay. And save it for later. <laughs> okay. okay. So, why don't you read off the one that you kept? All right. So, for my event, um this comes under uh the reunion tour and uh it it's not going well. And so Bosco the Trash King is hired by the steam powered crazy's former fan club president to assassinate dr moeller in revenge for his decisions to swip up switch up the band's lineup bosco farms the assassination out to the screedish chef of the far northlands who tricks the steam powered crazies to come to a feast where he feeds them some meat pies that contain the remains of the murdered dr moeller all right all right, and that was the first round. That was the entire uh, Amelia's <laughs> focus. Uh, we are probably not going to play more than half another round because you see how long this game takes. Uh, but then um, the play comes to me because now I get to set a legacy and create an event based on that. So go ahead and talk to us yourselves while I do that. Okay. So, wow, Amelia, okay. I, that reaction was genuine, just like when I watched The Red Wedding and I went, what the fuck just happened? Well, and... I mean, when I first started thinking about this and I did a little pre-planning too, just in my head, I was like, mm, Swedish chef is going to do some Titus Andronicus shit. 
<laughs> right. So yeah, I, I was just waiting for my time to work that in. <laughs> oh, well, great timing. Oh my gosh, that totally worked. I it shocked me. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I put a few cool. nice things in. I tried to be, <laughs> be light on the first one, but uh, we all know it's going to go downhill from here. <laughs> I also try to be light. I mean, we're all brighters, so eventually it's going to go downhill. Yeah. 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 It's got. It has to. Yeah. It has to go down. You got to have your 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 uh, climactic horribleness somewhere. I think you you may have achieved it there, <laughs> Amelia. Kudos to you. Yes, very good. Just thinking like, do, 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 do. and it's human flesh. <laughs> All right, sorry. I'm cracking my I totally have an idea now. I totally <laughs> have an idea. What would a, a food made out of puppet taste like, though? It would be very spongy. Yeah, it'd probably be like a portobello mushroom fake <laughs> burger sandwich thing. <laughs> I've heard multiple behind the scenes thing that actually Muppets really reek because. They never get clean oh, and they're filled with God. sweat, sweaty hands all the day. I yeah. that is fact. I did not need to know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've been a fan my entire life, and I just wow. <laughs> that was the inside awesome. of the Big Bird suit. <laughs> Fortunately, it's just one guy this whole time. But yeah, yeah he's like, mm, it smells like home. <laughs> As someone who often writes about the worst of humanity, Toad, that was too dark. <laughs> Too much. Too much. Yeah. I bet they were excited when Febreze was invented. Right. (laughs) I bet they were. So, oh my gosh, I think I can handle the murdered Dr. Muller being in the meat pies better than the uh, the smelly Muppet suits. (laughs) Yeah, somehow that's worse. Mm -hmm. I know, right? I know. I dreamed of, uh, you know, being a set director for Muppet my whole life. That's what I wanted to do, like my whole life. When I was a kid, that was my dream when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I know I came this close to going to art school, and then I decided to be an English major instead. But being in LA, I probably could have become a set director or, you know, set person. I just really love the Muppets Tonight Show. That show was the best. (laughs) The best. I know. It was. It was the best made my made my day my parents were screaming in the next room and i could watch the muppet show awesome. <laughs> all right i have added okay so i picked as a legacy whoops i closed it uh open it up again uh the house of the bear so the the legacies will become um a cycle mm. a, a palette of ideas and as we go forward if we went more than one turn you would be able to pull from uh legacies uh and then i added uh this event underneath uh, the the uh, shrimpy thing, the house of the bear takes advantage of the chaos and attacks the house of the cat. Nice. All right, so that was that. Now, Lisa, you are the new lens. So, what would you like to focus on? Oh, oh golly, gosh, and golly. Um, I thought you said you see. like to swear. <laughs> I Give us the hard stuff. I know. <laughs> I know. God damn it. I'm not sure. Okay, you, you um, go ahead and think about that and we'll talk. Okay. I, I, I'm on it. I'm on it. I promise. Uh, so, T, I got a question for you. You haven't seen the show, but um, the cast of the Los Spookies, there, uh, there's a gay character, a bi character, an asexual character, and a consistent theme in the show is it's not a big deal for anybody. Um, is that a sign of the 2020s or is that something that's happened before in latin american media i mean i don't know i'm still getting to know mexico and like also i live in a very gay bubble of mexico oh. like puerto Vallarta is like incredibly gay mm-hmm. it's like we're not the majority not yet but we'll get there <laughs> um but it's 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 a different it's like you live outside of the United States, so like you go from a place where like the United States are not the majority, like Mexicans and Canadians are the majority, but then you go to Puerto Vallarta where like straight people are also not the majority. So like I'm used to be like a minority minority, and now I'm like <laughs> like somewhere floating in between. Mm-hmm. Um, but like is 
it being treated like it's no big deal, that's not really what I see out here. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of like sympathy and empathy for straight men who are like, I just showed up, I'm on vacation, I'm hoping I can meet some girls. And we're like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> place, dude. You should have done your research, dude. <laughs> yeah. God bless. Like, I hope you're fine. How long are you here? They're like three weeks, and you're like, <sighs> <laughs> well, yeah. But there's there's still a racial dynamic that I think is happening here, um, where like, not that I don't have problems getting laid. I don't have problems getting laid when I want to get laid, but like. Like some white gay men who are here, they're like, I step outside and I'm fucking somebody. And I'm like, that is not my experience. <laughs> um, and I'm like, what would that look like? Like, I can't even imagine that. I dreamed of that, but like, <laughs> it's not ever happened. And I live in this like gay tropical paradise, it's still not happening. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I'm the wrong skin color for that. So we'll see. Not that I can't get laid. I can get laid. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Maybe we'll I'm do so another boring. show exploring that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm so boring. I'm like, well, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you have the opportunity to. Yeah. It's it's interesting. It's interesting. There's like there's been a couple of times I've gone to the bathhouse uh and hooked up with people and then walked on the malecone a day or two later and they're there like with their wives and children like wow. on their family vacation you're just like oh. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah it's like that that uh sex in the city uh episode where samantha realizes she's literally fucked every man on manhattan <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like that. It's like it's very, very close to that. All right, Lisa, it looks like you filled something in. Yes. Okay, so for a focus, it's like just the name. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me let it's, me it's uh, much refine more this. Than that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna put his name. All right. There we go. And go ahead and put your name in parentheses after that so we keep track of who the lens is. Oh. Right, right, right. You told me that before. Uh... All right, so the focus is Ratirian, who is sort of the Rizzo the Rat character, right? Yes. Okay. And yeah. where are we drawing him from? He's in the first column. Yes, that's it. Okay, cool. My microphone is in the way. Thank you. It's proportional for Okay. Is that the only thing we know about him so far? Uh well he, we know he eats cheese and that he knows things. Okay. And <laughs> that he has to be carried around in a wheelbarrow. That's right. how he travels. Oh, okay, that was down in the pallet. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Lisa, now you can create one or two as long as they're nested uh, period event scenes involving him. Okay, so they can either be under the current periods or I can make a new one, is that it? You can make a new period if you like. And then I put a scene or an event and a scene? No, uh, if you do a period, then you create an event inside that period. If you create an event, Got then it. you create a scene inside that event. Okay, so they just have to be two nested. levels. Yeah. Yeah, two levels. Got it. Okay. Um, but you, yeah, you can create a period. Okay. Yeah, so this is a GM-less game, and these are becoming much more common these days because you know, there's role-playing games are sort of running up against the reality of people's schedules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Like Dungeons and Dragons has done a pretty good job of of doing their uh, Adventures League, where you can just it's a system for playing pickup games, and you can keep your character sheet and just go from different <laughs> game master to game master and you know build up your character that way. Um, there's games like this which are GMless because if the GM can't show up, then there ain't no game. 
And this one obviously is not like a traditional role playing game, but there's stuff like Iron Sworn, which is a little bit closer to that, where there's just you no know, GM and you just sort of communally flesh out a story from beginning to end. Um, somebody compared role playing games as sort of just if if it's you line up the history with jazz, it's just getting into the bebop era. Ooh. <laughs> so there's a lot more innovations on the way. Yeah. I like that. Me too. Yeah, and, but yet at the same time, it's so cool to think about how, you know, like, for example, another fun fact about Iowa is that we had a land hurricane this summer, and it blew all of the power lines down. Okay, so uh, a land hurricane. Yes, it is known as a derecho. I've never heard of this before. Yeah, neither had I until it happened to me. <laughs> And uh, we had, I think we were out without power for like eight days, uh -huh. but we still had our gaming group because we didn't need any technology whatsoever mm -hmm. to do it. And um, so that's, that's something I still think is pretty cool about um, the traditional book, paper, pencil, roll the dice mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's somewhat mobile, you know, if you're not using figs and stuff, you can take it with you. Um, I know a lot of people who are military or former military who played a lot of D and D um, at the base because they, you know, you could just take it with you, pick up the game, and mm -hmm. um, it was something to kind of take their minds off of things. So, did you hear uh, in yeah. California they had a pilot program of teaching inmates in federal penitentiaries Dungeons and Dragons? I did read about that. Yeah. Really. Yeah, and it fosters cooperation, sort of like, you know, because like your character has skills, but weaknesses and other people in your team have different skills and weaknesses. And so you kind of like mm -hmm. have to figure out how to work with each other. And so it helped build social bonds and help build like social welfare. But then the shitty thing is they ended the program. Mm -hmm. Um, and those inmates, they, they kept going without mm -hmm. the program, but like, you know, they weren't as resourced. Mm -hmm. You know, they right. have to like hold back on the commissary for months and months and months to buy like a player's handbook because it's mm -hmm. like $50, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which was like heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, you made a bad decision. You go to prison. The best thing that can happen to you is you learn how to play D&D. &D. <laughs> it's agree. funny you say that because I often thought if I end up prison, prison, Game mastering is going to be my hustle. <laughs> you go, it's like, okay, if you want to play in my game, you have to pay me two packs of cigarettes. <laughs> Dude. I don't want that. I just want a force field of guys who are invested in me staying alive. Dude, unfortunately, when I was in jail, not drinking coffee like super helped me out because uh, every morning for breakfast, I could barter my coffee, my <laughs> sugar packet, and my cream packet the three different people get three different things in return. Mm -hmm. So I was like, good throughout the day. <laughs> I'm hopelessly addicted to cigarettes. So like the first couple of days, I was just like cigarettes. So like I would like give up my coffee, my sugar and cream packets and get six cigarettes for the day. All right. So you're kind of burying the lead there. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> you want to unpack that or just leave it, let it lie? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It was another lifetime. It was another country. It's fine. <laughs> the United States legally let me leave. We're fine. I did my debt. <laughs> yeah, if I, I skip having coffee for a day, it's it's not good. It's not good at all. It's well because I just got diagnosed with ADHD, and for a long time, you know, as as a thirty seven year old woman. Uh, I was just self-medicating with like stimulant crap mm, just to focus. Yeah. And so finally I got Adderall and now I'm only drinking like one cup of coffee a day because I don't need that constant, you know, just to stay like productive and, and stuff. So that's, that's kind of been my, my big most recent journey talking about, you know, women and, and how they get treated in the healthcare industry and stuff. Cause mm -hmm. I also have a, a thyroid issue and nobody believes anything about that. You're like, well, I'm super tired and my hair is falling out. They're like, you're probably just old. Uh, you need to <laughs> exercise uh, wow. and you need to stop eating carbs. <laughs> like, doctors no, I, 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 this. I'm like, have you considered that you're fat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, yeah. So, but with, 
the mental health field, surprisingly, um, once I kind of figured out that this was where, you know, I, I just read a lot about, about it. And I've been working with kids with ADHD my pretty much my whole career. And I just never thought, hey, that's the reason why I get along with these like kids who are like troubled or whatever is because we have the same problems. <laughs> uh, and I, I went in and got tested and um, they were like, yeah, no, you you do. Here's, here's, some, here's some Adderall for you now. Um, but yeah, I don't think I would have known if I wasn't spending time working with, with the youth. And like, like I told one of my students, I was like, guess what? There's a reason that you and I understand each other's brains so well. <laughs> that's so sweet though in a certain it, way yeah i know it's like oh we're both we're both kind of kind of have broken brains but we're here together and i'm gonna get you graduated <laughs> this is happening <laughs> i am not gonna say broken i'm just gonna say different <laughs> okay neurally atypical <laughs> yeah yes yeah that's what they say now is is there is a neural spectrum right mm -hmm. yeah um, so that's which I think deal. is true. Just no matter you're if you're human, you're you know on some kind of neural spectrum. I mean, from beginning to end, because nobody is the same. None of us are the same. I, I've just been waiting for the day that I can finally quote the vine and say that I got diagnosed with cool guy syndrome and now I take Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we should we should get back to the game though. Okay, so let's I get back have to the pea suit, so let's get back. Yeah. To the game. Uh, how's it going? Lisa? Obviously, my Adderall wore off many hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where Where is your event? Uh, it's at the end here, okay. past uh, past Dr. Mueller and the Crazies reunion. All right. Go ahead and read it for us. Before the colonization. Yeah. Would you go ahead and read it for us? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and I, I don't have ADD. Okay. Um, in the aftermath of the Dr. Mueller feast, Rotarian gains power in order to clean up the mess left by the Swedish chef. All right. Um, Rotarian puts a plan in motion to get revenge on Bosco the trash king and his instrument of confection, the Swedish <laughs> chef. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are coming up on two hours, uh, so how do you feel about uh, wrapping it up? Okay. I'm a cigarette smoker. I'm about to completely change my personality. If I don't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's just go, uh, let's give a summary here, take turns reading the columns. Uh, uh, Lisa, why don't you take the first column? Sure. We begin with the wedding of the House of Bear and the House of Frogs. Retirian, who is holed up in a cheese shop, gets a report from an informant that Shrimpy plans to sabotage the bear and frog wedding with weaponized toast. Meanwhile, a large-scale Sweetums Muppet died while tasting the poison in the champagne, so now everyone knows there's poisons. Alarms have been raised. How do we stall? Because the wedding party is getting poisoned. The steam-powered crazies will just keep playing, but they perform too well. Many noble lords, gay and straight, start to become enthralled with the steam-powered crazies. The steam-powered crazies realize they exercise political power, perhaps for the first time in their lives. They decide to accrue social capital instead of expend and just play shows at the right time and right place all right t why don't you take the next uh next one and then you can i think you said you had to go to the bathroom yes <laughs> okay so take the short one and go <laughs> all right shrimpy an emissary from the house of prawns moves in with the royal family and begins his decade of espionage and betrayal to a a road the royals trust in each other the House of Bear takes advantage of the chaos and attacks the House of Cats. All right, I'll take the next one. From the flames and ash of the House of Bear and House of Frog and the House, and oh, sorry, after the House of Bear, comma, the House of Frog and the House of Cat form a lasting alliance. During the weeks of tense negotiations of the House of the Frog and the House of the Cat for a better future, 
Tempers flare, negotiations crumble until the steam-powered crazies show up and play the gig. And everyone has such a good time that the alliance goes forward. How can the alliance between the cat and frog go forward when Creamy, the leader of the fa uh, House of Frog, is so stubborn and unyielding? The negotiators take a break and enjoy some of the grog in the courtyard. The steam-powered crazies show up and rock the house. They give Creamit a ukulele just as a rainbow, a most auspicious omen, appears in the sky. He sings from the heart and it softens the cat people. The steam-powered crazies knew that Creamy needed to open his heart and speak from it, and the music was key. Lady Pixnalia finds that Creamy has fallen in love with a maiden from the steam-powered crazies, so she sends Serge Frogs a lot, who is in her employee as a bodyguard to Haya Creamy as he goes on an ambassadorial mission to the land of the Rainbow Connection. All right, Amelia, please take the next one. All right, so Dr. Moeller and the Steam Powered Crazies reunion tour was set to take the West of Toast by Storm, but audiences hated the new band. So then Bosco the Trash King is hired by the Steam Powered Crazies former fan club president to assassinate Dr. Moeller in revenge for his decision to switch up the band's lineup. Bosco farms the assassination out to the screedish chef of the far Northlands who tricks the steam powered crazies to come to a feast where he feeds them some meat pies that contain the remains of the murdered Dr. Moeller. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, take the penultimate column, please. In the aftermath of the Dr. Moeller feast, Retirian gains power in order to clean up the mess left by the screedish chef. Retirian puts a plan in motion to re get revenge on Bosco the Trash King and his instrument of confection, the Screedish Chef. <laughs> and then the last period, which we never did quite touch on, was the colonization of the continent of Sakasaurus. And there we go. Awesome. <laughs> this would make a wonderful... <laughs> this would make a wonderful Muppet movie. <laughs> uh, I think we need to uh, uh -huh. get on the bandwagon with that. In my head, one of the original members got kicked out of the power, uh, the sea powered crazies, ironically just ended up on the continent. And when other people showed up, they were like, holy crap, it's you. <laughs> and then the real reunion tour began, but and then they had to find a, a, a hot young singer to replace Dr. Moeller. <laughs> the real reunion tour, except for with poison darts <laughs> and <laughs> tribal treaties that are not going to work out well. And I'm just imagining like scores of Elmos appearing <laughs> in the dark yeah. jungles and just they're all like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> like headdresses, <laughs> like yeah. amazing shit. And they're just like, <laughs> bow and arrow. Like, <laughs> yes. Right. Beautiful. Yes. Um, so you see yes, how and we, they're we, right we started with just a prompt and we, and we were a little bit confined because we had these two IP that we were sort of trying to navigate the two. But I think we did, we threaded the needle pretty nicely here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and Rotarian will end up in uh, Sakatoris as a, you know, a tribal king, you know, and he'll, he'll start <laughs> to go mad. <laughs> All right, let's like do one. Uh, Joseph so Conroy things. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, let's see, which one? Uh, how do you feel like uh, a channel like this supports itself, guys? Mm. Do you think we do some sort of horrible ad read or we have a Patreon page or something like that? I feel like Patreon's probably a little more your speed. Maybe if, if we had, <laughs> yeah. you know, audience, maybe someday. Right now, mm -hmm. all I'm asking you is if you like this, go out and buy our books. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So let's come back to the panel. Uh, let's do one round, one more round of play uh, plugs. Amelia, go ahead and plug your book. Yeah, so my book is called Legendary, and it's an LGBT historical romance with a happy ending. Um, you can buy it on Amazon, but it is on uh, the Ingram catalog, so you can go to your local bookstore and ask them to order it for you, which is what I would prefer that you do. All right, Lisa, what you got coming up? Yeah. So what I have coming up is I'm going to be releasing Acid Wit for free on my website, lisamontaigne.com, uh, in the next couple of weeks as a teaser for the full collection of my no creative nonfiction essays. And I'm hoping to uh, get you guys uh, interested in that. And also I'll be um, editing a, uh, a volume called Red Flags that's going to be a modern love kind of uh, all-inclusive um, 
what goes wrong with love stories that are <laughs> that's going to coming up in the following year. All right, and Tihi, Dark Corners, tell us about that. Yeah, Dark Corners is a short story collection that is about the like seedy underbelly of America, but also about a bunch of queer people of color in magical realism terms and surrealism and absurdism and just like things get bonkers it's um it's really fucking funny people buy Tee's book <laughs> it can, it's very very funny there's a couple of stories that have happy endings most of them don't but that's fine because they like they help you grow as a person i hope maybe um but they're just they're just bizarre because if you if if you're listening to this right now and you're a queer person of color, you already know that your life is bizarre. So these are these are your stories. Mm-hmm. All right, and I am Tom Malazzo. My book, subtly plugged, is the Faith Machine. It is a psychic espionage tale of two fisted tale of heresy when a team of psychics and spies find a Soviet we- weapon uh, that uses magic. Oh, bleh. Let me rephrase that. I need to get better at this. When they find a Soviet weaponization of religion uh, and uncover it, and everybody wants it, so they're on the run. And then my previous book, which is the yellow box right there, is Picking Up the Ghost. And that's about ghost lies and voodoo on the Mississippi and a 14-year-old boy trying to find his father, who's dead. But that's not stopping him. I wish my dad was dead. Anyway. (laughs) All right. We'll have links to everything we can link to in the show notes. And uh, thank once again to my panel. And thanks to anyone who watched this far. Have a good one. Have a good one. Bye. Bye, guys. (laughs) Nice talking to you.